So in the last tutorial, we successfully set up Box 2D, and we were able to click here on the Easel JS stage to generate circle shapes in our physics world. Now remember, these graphics are actually just the debug draw that comes with Box 2D Web. In this tutorial, what we're going to do is to integrate Easel JS objects to use for our graphics. So if you download the tutorial files, uh, I've included just a single PNG file called soccer.png. Um, so just put that into the same directory um, as the other files that we've been working with. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Sublime Text. So obviously the place where we're going to want to change things is here in our mouse down. So here we're creating our box 2D circle shapes. Um, but again, we want to actually use Easel JS display objects for this. So what I'm going to do is to create a new class called Ball. Now there's a couple of different ways you could approach this. First, I could actually subclass the Easel JS display object class um, and do things that way. But inheritance in JavaScript to me it always seems a little bit um, kind of messy. So in a better approach, at least in my opinion, is just to create a ball class, and then I'm going to have a property on that ball class called view, which is actually going to be my crea uh, create.js bitmap object. And also a part of that class is going to be my box2d um, body. Okay, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to sa save that into the same directory, and I'm just going to call it ball.js. And this is going to be our class file. And like I've done previously in my other tutorials, we're going to use a self-executing anonymous function for this. So function window. Then we're going to come down here. And we're going to pass in the main window object. Like that. And then here's our start of our file. So again, when we're creating a class, in JavaScript, we're essentially going to be creating a function. So I'm going to say function ball. And then lastly, down at the bottom, we're going to need to expose this to our root scope. So what I'm going to do to do that is to say window.ball is equal to ball. And that way we're able to actually instantiate this object um, from our root scope. Okay, so inside of here, what I, like I mentioned before, the first thing we're going to do is to create a new EaselJS bitmap object, which is going to hold the image of that soccer ball. So again, I'm going to create a property on this ball class called view. So to do that, I'm going to say this dot view is equal to new createjs dot bitmap. And to this, I can pass in a, a numerous different things. The easiest, I'm just going to pass in the actual uh, string URL to where it can be found. And it's in the same directory. And it's called soccer.png. Now, another important thing, like I mentioned in the last tutorial, is that in Box2D, all of the objects have their registration point in the center. So I'm also going to need to set that registration point here on my bitmap object. So I'm going to say this dot view, and then I want to set the regx property. And I'm also going to set that equal to this dot view dot reg y equal to 50. Because this PNG is actually a perfectly square 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So this is essentially just putting the registration point in the center. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go back to my main JS file. And I'm going to copy this block here, which is where we actually created our uh, circle physics shapes, because a lot of this is going to be the same. And I'm going to paste this in right here. So this line, fixture def, is going to remain the same. Um, density, friction, we can adjust those if we want um, you know, to get the right look. Let's say maybe I want to make the density, maybe make it 5. And maybe I want to make them a little more bouncy because, again, these are soccer balls. So I'll say 0.8. And then here we're creating our body def. Again, all of this can remain the same. And we're creating a dynamic body. Now for the actual um, size 
of the circle shape, obviously that's going to have to change because we don't want it to be um, a random size because obviously that soccer ball has a certain uh, dimensions to it. So what we're going to do now is we'll keep this uh, randomness on the x-axis. We'll position it at zero. And for the circle shape, essentially we want to take the radius divided by scale. And we know the radius is 50. And remember, we're dividing all of the pixel values by that scale value in order to turn it into meters, which is what uh, Box2D expects. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create a property on my bitmap object, which is the view, um, and assign the body to that. So here where we create this body here, um, what we actually do is it will return a box2D body object. So what I'm going to do here is to say this dot view dot body is equal to world dot create body body def. So that means we're creating a property on our easel JS bitmap object called body, which is going to hold our actual box 2D body. And then down here we're going to say this dot view dot body dot create fixture. Now the reason we're doing this is so that when we actually call the tick function on this bitmap object, we're going to have an easy way to reference that box 2D body. Okay, so now the next thing I want to do is, uh, you know, obviously when our simulation is running, we're going to need to be checking the X and the Y position of our actual box 2D shape and making sure that our bitmap is positioned correctly. So now I could create an update function here, a generic update function, which I could call from my main loop. But remember that all EaselJS uh, display objects already have a function like that called the tick function. So that's what I'm going to implement here so I don't even have to call it um, from outside of this class. So I'm just going to say this dot view, and then the uh, event is on tick is equal to tick and that function we're going to create down here. So let's go ahead and create that function. Now it is going to send an event object to this function, so we'll, we'll put a parameter there to catch it. So now when we say this inside of this function, we're actually going to be talking about the view property, which is essentially our create.js bitmap object. So first we're going to set its x position, equal to this dot body. And now you can see why we created that body property on our view so that we can easily reference it here in the tick function. So now it's, this is essentially a box 2D body. And to get the position of it, we actually use the get position function. And that's going to return a, a property with x and y values. So for this one, obviously, we're going to want to retrieve the x value. Now remember at this point that this is a box 2D property. So when we get the x position, it's not going to be in pixels. It's actually going to be in meters. So instead of dividing by scale, here we actually need to multiply by scale, like that. So I'm going to duplicate that line. And this is obviously going to be very similar get position y, and here we're going to be setting the y position of our bitmap object. Now lastly inside of here, we need to deal with the rotation, because remember obviously these things are also rotating. So we're going to set the rotation of our bitmap object, so we're going to say this dot rotation. And now to actually get the um, current angle of the box 2D shape, we're going to again go to this dot body, and then we're going to call the get angle function. Now this is actually in radians, so what we're going to need to do is to quickly convert it. So I'm going to multiply that by 180 divided by math dot pi. And that just simply converts that into uh, the correct format, the degrees format that an EaselJS uh, rotation property expects. 
So you can see our class here is pretty simple. Again, we just have a generic empty uh, object called ball. We attach a view property to that, which contains our easel.js bitmap object. We set the registration point in the center, which is important for box2d. And then essentially we have that duplicated code that we created last time. The only difference really is that we're actually um, catching this body property from this create body function call and attaching it to our view um, property. And that way, once we're in the tick function, we can easily retrieve it, get the position, and we can map the position of our PNG to our actual box 2D shape. Okay, so I'm going to save this now. We can go back to our main JS file. And here, I'm just going to get rid of all of this. And now it's going to be really simple. So essentially, we're going to say var, I'll just say b is equal to new ball. And now I just need to add this ball to our easel.js stage. So I'm going to say stage dot add child. Now here's the, the thing that's important to remember. We're not adding just the ball class itself. We're adding the view property, which actually contains our easel.js display object. So I'm going to say b dot view. And that's what we're actually going to be adding. Now the last thing we need to do is obviously in our HTML file, we need to now import that class. So we're gonna come under here, I'll put in a new script block, and this is ball.js. Okay, so we can go over to Chrome now and refresh this. Now the thing you'll notice when you run this, when I click, is our simulation is working, but where are our actual easel.js bitmap objects. That's because we have debug draw turned on still. Now, if you, are, if you are doing a project like this, you can't both draw the debug shapes from Box2D and your create.js shapes onto the same canvas. So if we actually come down here to our tick function and comment that out, now if we go back, refresh, now you can see we actually have our uh, correct graphics, our easel.js bitmap objects behaving the way they should and everything runs really good. And actually if I click a ton, you'll see performance never really lags and we're actually getting a really solid frame rate. So performance on this is actually really good. So then you're probably wondering, okay, but I want to be able to you know, see my debug shapes overlaid onto my easel.js objects. Well, what we can do is to come under here and create a new canvas. I'm gonna call this debug. And what we're gonna do is to, pos to position these absolutely. So they're essentially on top of one another. So let me go ahead and Copy and paste that. This is going to be debug. Now we want to be sure we don't use a background color here so that we can actually see through to the canvas underneath and just keep position absolute. So now we have these two canvases, um, one on top of the other. So if I go back to main.js and I'm going to keep that turned on, now we need to make a couple of changes. So first we need to um, create a new reference to that debug canvas. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's paste it in. I'm going to create a property called debug. We'll also expose it here. And what we're going to do is essentially get a DOM reference to that debug canvas. Like that. Now the next thing we need to do is to come down where we actually set up our debug draw. And remember here, the set sprite function is actually where we say what canvas do we actually want to paste this into. Well now we need to change this to debug. Now another thing we can do is to change the fill alpha on those uh, debug shapes that are drawn. So we can do that as well. So we can say debug draw and it is set fill alpha, and we'll just set it to 
That way we can see the objects underneath. Okay, so now when we do this, we're still going to have an issue. And let's go back and refresh. Here you can see we can see our ground. But now when I click, I don't get anything. And that's because the top um, debug canvas is actually catching the mouse events. So while we're in this debug mode, what we're going to do is to listen for the mouse down on the debug canvas. So I'm just going to change debug to, or sorry, change stage to debug. Now for this, we're going to be using just the regular JavaScript on mouse down event. So what we need to do is to simply change that to not have capital M and capital D like that. So I'm going to refresh. And now you can see, we can see our EaselJS bitmap objects um, underneath of the actual Box2D debug shapes. So at this point, we can actually look at it and say, okay, we want to tweak maybe the size of the Box2D shape or, or anything else. And again, we can adjust the alpha that that is being drawn at by using that uh, set fill alpha. So let's say we change it to 0 0.9, come back, refresh, and here you can see we can barely see the EaselJS bitmap objects underneath. And obviously this is only something you would do while you're debugging your application. In the, you know, once you are ready to go, you'd get rid of that debug canvas. Um, but this is an approach that, that works pretty well. So that's it for this tutorial. Again, the main thing is we were able to uh, create a class which contained both our EaselJS display object and our Box2D body definition. And using that, we can easily create um, physics-based JavaScript applications with CreateJS.